Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder is a publication of the American Psychiatric Association. It's been around for half a century now. Uh, the way it works is a classification system. It describes mental disorders on the basis of symptoms and it provides uh, uh, specific definitions which will inform policies, uh, funding and uh, research. Uh, now, because the way we conceptualize disorders change over time, there will be different editions which reflect changes in the way we define these disorders. Autism has been uh, in the uh, DSM uh, starting from the third edition and uh, in the fourth edition which was published in the 1994 and it's been used until now, uh, this category uh, of pervasive developmental disorders in which autism was part, was characterized by a number of different types of autism, which we can call subtypes, um, including autism, Asperger's disorders, and other disorders uh, that were similar. What is happening in this new edition, which is coming up in 2013, all of these different subtypes are going to be merged in only one diagnosis. Uh, which will be autism spectrum disorders. So what happens is that children who now uh, meet criteria for autism and children who now meet criteria for Asperger's disorder or the other autism subtypes, they all have, they all going to have the same diagnosis, which is autism spectrum disorder. The work conducted at the Olga Tennyson Autism Research Center informed some of the most relevant and controversial changes in the DSM. In particular, Cheryl Disanayak had published uh, in the 90s uh, a number of works and reviewed the literature about the differences between the different subtypes of autism, finding that they're all more similar than different. And uh, Margot Pryor and colleagues in the 90s found that uh, the differences between different subtypes were quantitative difference, the degree, the severity of autism symptoms rather than qualitative differences. So based on these studies, the DSM-5 committee made the decision to merge these different subtypes into one single diagnosis. The Olga Tennyson Autism Research Center position is uh, a pretty positive one based uh, on the fact that we believe that the changes that were introduced in the DSM-5 are motivated by research and uh, evidence-based uh, findings as opposed to lobbying and negotiations. This is one of the main concerns when you have a new definition of autism uh, or a new definition of any disorders is that uh, changes are motivated by reasons other than results of research. For example, changes in the policy or changing the access uh, to funds and so on. We believe that this was not the case and each single decision that was uh, uh, made by uh, the DSM-5 committee appears to be motivated by uh, science. Having said that, there are a few of those decisions that we believe are controversial and deserve some more uh, um, thinking around and we are pretty critical around some of these decisions. There is a possibility that uh, uh, people who currently do uh, meet criteria for autism would not respond to uh, a criteria for autism under the DSM-5 and in fact these preliminary studies that were published do suggest that less people will have a diagnosis of autism. Uh, under the DSM-5. Now, the point is it's not a bad thing in, if, in itself if the numbers change. In fact, if the DSM-5 was diagnosing the exact same amount of uh, uh, people with autism, then there should be no need for a new uh, addition or uh, 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 changing the classification. The fact is those who will be diagnosed are the ones who do need uh, uh, actually services and funds, or are we not diagnosing children who do need uh, funds? It's the preliminary data suggests that uh, the change will, will affect probably around 10% of the children. Now what we really need to understand is whether those children who don't meet criteria anymore are children who actually do need 
uh, funds. And uh, at this point, uh, the debate is, is open. We do believe, anyway, that it's not that the instrument is good if it classifies as autistic a lot of children. It is good if it does classify as autistic those who really uh, need, and in terms of rationalizing resources, is a good instrument if it does capture, if it does include those kids with autism who do need services as opposed to just lots of children. We do believe there are a few reasons uh, of concerns. The first one is there is a possibility that the next edition of the ICD, which is the International Classification of Diseases, which is provided by the World Health Organization, uh, will not uh, be um, harmonized, will not um, use the same criteria that are used uh, in the DSM-5. So there is a risk of having two different classification systems. And this is due to the fact that uh, um, there might be um, reasons for the committee working on the World Health Organization classification system not to uh, agree with some of the changes operated by the DSM-5 committee. Um, there is also some concern around the fact that uh, um, the presence of repetitive behaviors becomes really, really relevant at this point under the DSM-5 to diagnose children. Under this new uh, classification, children will have to show at least two instances of repetitive behaviors. And uh, while this is a, uh, it's motivated by science, again, by the fact that research, research identified this as a very relevant feature, it might be that uh, clinicians, pediatricians, people doing diagnosis out there might not have the training that is necessary to capture and adequately recognize those behaviors. Another problem is that the DSM-5 introduced a new category which is called social communication disorder. It's not part of the autism spectrum disorder, but it's very similar to autism because it does involve difficulties with the social use of communication. Now, children uh, who now meet criteria uh, for uh, Asperger's or autism or other subtypes of autism, it might be that some of these children, if they don't show clear repetitive behaviors, will be classified under this new uh, label, this new diagnostic category. This uh, uh, does involve some risk because currently being a new condition, being introduced now, there's no legislation, there's no guidelines, and there are no treatment uh, uh, policies that can uh, guide uh, decisions on children who will be now um, categorized under this new label. So these are all reasons of concern. At the same time, it's really important to understand that every uh, change in classification uh, will have, uh, uh, will involve some problems until we find a way to define autism on the basis of genetics or biology or pathophysiology or understanding uh, the nature of autism from a point of view that is explanatory, understanding what are the mechanisms underlying autism as opposed to how these children look like and putting together children who are similar in their symptoms and their uh, behavior.